Hi, I'm Dr. Greenbrier Almond, and as you can tell, after 35 years of watching us on Channel 3, Tender Loving Care, we're in a new setting. And this is Artistry on Main here in Buchanan, West Virginia. And I'm very pleased to have a guest uh, that I have known practically all my life. Greg, welcome to our program, Tender Loving Care. Hi, Greenbrier. You know, uh, we, we go way back uh, to uh, grade school and, and uh, all the way through school. and. And I remember your wife, uh, I don't even know if you were dating her then, but she was the spirit of our 4-H camp. Right. Which makes her the most important person in Upshur County, not, not the homecoming queen, but the spirit <laughs> of the 4-H camp. Yeah, and, she, uh, she was very active in 4-H. In fact, that's, that's one of the things that we did together was we were in 4-H together out at Lawrence. Okay. The right. Lawrence Go-Getters is what I remember. Okay, that was a good name. Yeah. And her parents, I think, had a store in the post office. No, that that was that was actually her great uncle. Oh, great uncle. Okay. Okay. Her dad was a, uh, a strip miner. Okay. And her mom worked at uh, first of all at Iden Buick as the bookkeeper there, uh -huh. and then uh, retired from St. Joe's Hospital as the business manager. There. Oh. Okay. Well, see, I learned something already. There you go. <laughs> well, great. You uh, and I have. Graduated from high school in 1966. You didn't have to tell everybody. Uh oh. That. Well, uh, well, we look but like it, we look like so. Yeah. yeah. But you're in pretty good shape. You look good. Well, thank you, doctor. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but we're we're here to talk about creativity and, of course, about wood turning, something that you become fascinated and skilled in. And and I don't know anything about it. So this is a tremendous opportunity for me to learn from you. All right. Uh, well, it's, it's kind of interesting because I was a math teacher right out of college, and sometimes we're the most uncreative people in the world. That's we right. want two plus two to always be four. Yeah. Um, and I uh, spent my, most of my career as a high school administrator, mm -hmm. and uh, in retirement, I've, I've played with wood for a good while, I, and made about all the beds I could for the grandkids, okay. and three or four bedroom suits. And, uh, a few years ago, made my own cherry kitchen cabinets to remodel wow. our home. And I had a whole bunch of scraps uh -huh. laying around. I'd made a few pins before, but they just didn't stick. It just didn't, yeah. didn't do anything for me. But I started making a few pins, and uh, there's a, an important man in this story that really inspired me to keep on going. Okay. So can we go there? Sure, right. happy to. Yeah. One, of, one of the things that I think sets me apart from some other turners is the fact that most of my woods, not all, but most of my mm -hmm. woods have two stories to them. Okay. One is the story of where the wood came from, and the second story is how I acquired the wood. Mm. So, yeah. um, I'm... And we have, we have an abundance of wood. I mean, you're in the right uh, area of the world, aren't you? Here in absolutely. The hardwood capital of the world, actually. Trees galore. Yeah. Um, uh, and I, I collect wood from interesting buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, I have about a half a dozen buildings that are actually on the National Registry of Historic Places. So okay. One that I want to talk about a little bit is the Philadelphia sure. Covered Bridge, but okay. we'll get to that in a minute. Sure. I actually have wood from 15, I believe, of the counties in West Virginia. Really? Oh, and uh, about 100 different woods in my collection. Uh -huh. So what used to be garages in my house are now wood storage rooms. Okay, now okay. I, I, my grandmother, uh, collected flowers. So that she was a Methodist minister's wife and they would move a itinerant ministry and so she had clumps of flowers, a friendship garden she called it. And, and she was in love with those flowers that reminded her of people and now I'm hearing the same thought with wood. Uh, in fact, when you mentioned flowers, one of my most prized possessions is my grandmother, and that's unusual for people of our generation to have a grandmother who was a college graduate, graduated okay. from, uh, from Westland, ah, and yeah. I have her uh, botany book where she pressed flowers and in her beautiful handwriting wrote the common name, the scientific name, the descriptions wow. of where she found them. Yeah, that's and, a treasure. And yeah. it's, uh, it's bound with a shoestring. It's a beautiful <laughs> piece. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see what you have. Great. All right. So let me talk about the, this piece, if I can, for just a minute. Okay. Okay. Beautiful dark wood. Yeah. This is an old piece of walnut. Okay. All right? um, and this is the piece that I credit with keeping me going and really getting me inspired to find special woods. 
as a retired educator, I still do some consulting, and uh -huh. I was working in Webster County High School, and I'd made a few pins, and I took them to show them off, and the principal there had been an industrial arts teacher, and in the summers when he had some time, he had a business renovating old log homes. Hmm. Old okay. log homes. Yeah. So I showed him to Mike, and he said, Greg, I've got some wood you'd like. I said, Mike, I've got wood. That's <laughs> not a problem, right, right? right? He said, no, you'd like this. So this piece came into that story. Mm -hmm. There was a house, uh, a log home built in Greenbrier County, Greenbrier County, okay, good, in good. 8, 1820. And shortly yeah. after the Civil War, the people that had it did a couple of renovations to it. Mm -hmm. One is they put tongue and groove yellow poplar siding in the living room, so they had a wood wall instead of a log wall. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they added a porch. Well, fast forward to 1990, and the people that owned the house wanted it restored to its original condition. So they hired my friend Mike to take off the siding in the living room mm -hmm. and to tear off the porch. Well, as he tore the porch off, he didn't, he didn't recognize the wood in the floor. So he sent it off to WVU. They identified it as black locust mm. and carbon dated it to be 150 years old, wow. which validated the story about right after the Civil War. Sure. Yeah. So he's telling me about it. He says, Greg, I'll give you a piece of each of those. And I said, great. And then he said, but the real treasure is this one, all uh -huh. right? Now, I've cleaned this down and cut some off of it. It was about two and a half, three inches okay. thick, all right? But these were the this columns. This is like both, though. This yeah. is the column that held yeah. up the porch roof. Hmm. So this piece of wood was like eight, ten feet tall. Wow. And he, he showed that to me, and it is the most beautiful walnut, old growth. Tremendous. Old growth wood has such a beautiful green pattern mm -hmm. it, it grew so much slower than it did now does now has a much tighter grain yeah. and it's endured the centuries so mm -hmm. this is one of my favorite pieces and it's wood through and through uh, i have a brief story a forester friend of mine uh, who managed 12,000 acres up near herbisha and uh, he was uh, he took me in there and he showed me some walnut trees and he said these are going to make furniture forever and he talked about how they would be cut and the helicopter would be above them. They would take the whole tree, take it to Ohio, I think the Amish or someone, and they would be making veneer Absolutely. furniture forever. Right. And that this is that valuable. Yeah. Because I don't need a whole lot of wood to make a no. pen. And no. so this one probably represents, you know, 100, 150 pens. Wow. Right? And it's it's a real buzz for me to go from that to this pen, which mm. happens to be made out beautiful? of that same. Okay. Wow, and this is tremendous. I, Look at that, this uh, so dark and beautiful. Uh, and, 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 and it's first class, you can tell. Yeah. I, I, I'd wait to retire to get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, you know, let me, let me highlight okay. just a few of them, all right? Uh, this is this is one that I really really like. This is actually a piece of the Philippi covered bridge. Ah, all right? okay. Um, and um, so, so we all know about the Philippi covered bridge, the first land battle of the Civil War. Exactly. Yeah. All right? And it is one of six two lane bridges in the nation, hmm. and it is the only covered bridge in the national highway system. Wow. So when they okay. built the bypass of Philippi, uh -huh. they were going to change technically 250 to go the bypass. Okay. Right? If you notice now, it's called a truck route, and 250 still goes oh, through the bridge okay. because they would, have, they would have lost that, lost that, designation. that, that, that designation as the right. only covered bridge in the national highway yeah. system. All right? yeah. So um, And then we nearly lost that bridge too. 1989. Yeah. Yeah. So I have found from four completely different sources wood from the Philippine Covered Bridge. Mm. Uh, one set I have, one small piece, set of small pieces I have is from the first renovation of the bridge, which happened in 1938. Okay. When the bridge was built, interestingly enough, it was all poplar. Okay. I would have thought it would have been a harder wood, oak, right. hickory, whatever. But uh, my research says that poplar is so tight grained that the, wood, the water tends to run off of it, hmm. where oak, being open grained, will hold okay. the water, and then you get the freezing and thawing in the winter, hmm. and it tends to deteriorate. So the engineers knew what they were doing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lemuel Chenoweth was a smart dude, okay? <laughs> So the whole bridge was wooden, but in 1852 when the bridge was built, there wasn't anything they visualized about transportation except the horse and wagon. Yeah. By 1938, Henry Ford had revolutionized the world and we had cars, right. trucks, and the whole nine yards. Right. The, the floor was showing wear and tear. And by the way, the early Fords, at least I remember one that my uncle had, that had wooden siding <laughs> on a Ford oh, yeah. station wagon. Oh, they were so cool. Yeah. The yeah. woodies. The woodies. Okay. <laughs> but, um, 
if you if you really study the bridge, the middle pier under the bridge is hand cut stone. That was mm. original in 1852, okay. and it was only a two span bridge. But when they put the concrete floor in, the additional weight of the concrete and the steel to support the concrete demanded new piers to support that. So the two additional piers were put in in 1938 ah, okay. and are concrete. So, so everyone will want to take a tour here. Not only do you want to get a pen here at Artistry on Main uh, as a tremendous souvenir of being a West Virginian, but you will go look at the bridge itself. Absolutely. And so you see, I, I told you I was a math person, and yeah. I wasn't all fascinated with any of this history, all right? right. There is a second covered bridge in, in Barber County, by the way, the Carrollton Covered okay. Bridge. Okay, over the Buchanan River. Which was designed also yeah. by Lemuel Chenoweth and built four years after the Philippi Covered Bridge. Mm. I have a big chunk of it for wow. the renovation. Okay. Yeah. So I'm always looking. So I, I need a piece of wood from Helvetia from your friend with oh, the walnut trees. Well, I'm okay. sure he'll want you to come and okay. get it. So this, this is one of my absolutely favorite pens. This is the ultimate Civil War pen. Okay. This is a replica of the 58 caliber mini balls that both sides used during well, the Civil that? War. Yeah. This is a replica of the 1861 Springfield musket that both sides so used. You're, you're working with a quite an artistic uh, a metal smith or whatever you would call them. Well, it's called an online supplier in this oh, yeah. so, okay. There's a company that makes these and I buy the, I buy okay. the kits for my, my pens. I, okay. I do the wood part, I do the assembly, sure. but sure. the metal part is somebody else. Well, someone knows what they're doing. I mean, look at that. Yeah, and this is a replica of the 44 caliber bullets that were used in the 1866 shot revolver that the officers and infantrymen both uh, carried. And mm. this really revolutionized hand-to-hand -hand combat, if you will, because before it was a single shot, I, I better be a good shot or I better yeah. be able to run. Right. Now I've got six times before I've got to reload. So okay. it really changed the, the, okay. the war. Okay. Now so, this is the, the stuff of cowboy movies, when they see how many chambers they have. Yeah. <laughs> or Russian roulette. <laughs> Russian okay. roulette, yeah. All right. So this is really one of my favorites, and I'd like okay. to tell people that you can't hold more history between your thumb and finger than this when this wow. is really made from the covered bridge. Yeah. But uh, I have changed that because now I have wood from the home of the first general killed in the Civil War, okay. who was Robert S. Garnett, who was killed at Quarry Ford, which is basically Parsons. Hmm. His home is in Parsons. Okay. It's on the National Registry, and I've acquired a piece of wood from that. My so if goodness. I hold, if I can hold two of those, I can hold more history. Wow. <laughs> okay. So this me, is tremendous. All right, so it's, so it's good to come back home, by the way. Right, all right. right. You know, and, and uh, it's good to have you a part of Artistry on Main. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is an endeavor that we, we hope will grow and blossom, and already it's, it's uh, doing uh, a lot of good for our community. Uh, I know the university president was down, uh, the new old president, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, Gordon G. And, and so he, uh, he was entertained here in the... In the uh, Artistry on Main, uh, and I'm sure he saw your display, which is right out front as you come in the front door. Prime space. Yeah. I was lucky. So this this is actually a piece of wood from Upshur County okay. that I got my engraver to do for me mm -hmm. because I like to have woods with a story. Sure. All right? This is actually a piece of chestnut from the shelving from this building wow. when it was home hardware okay. when you and I were boys here. Yeah. All right? yeah. So this is actually a piece of Upshur County wood. How about that? And it's prominently displayed up here, uh -huh. as are most of these. And I'll just take a second to tell you basically what I've got. The, if people, let, me, let me just say something. If, if people had something historic, I mean like home hardware, but it would be their own log cabin or their own something. Can they bring the wood to you and then you make it into something for I, them? I love doing that. Okay. I love doing that. Yeah. Uh, I just picked up uh, some sugar maple that was cut just back in the fall hmm. and the people asked me to make pins for all of the family members wow. as gifts out of the, of the sugar maple that yeah. grew and the, the tree was just a sapling when the house was built in 1902. Uh -huh. Oh my and goodness. so the families lived in it for generations, yeah. and yeah. so now they'll pass a little piece of that mm -hmm. tree on. 
Wow. So I really enjoyed doing that. Yeah. I've done some really special projects. I have an exclusive deal with Stonewall Resort. Okay. Um, Arnold Palmer designed the golf course there. Right. And the 12th fairway, he said it's going to go right there. Mm -hmm. And it, they had to cut some pecan trees. Okay. I didn't even realize didn't pecan know. grew in didn't West know. Virginia. Didn't know. I knew in Oklahoma and further south. Maybe. Georgia. Georgia, of course. Pecans. Yeah. Uh, but in 2002, when they opened the course, they had the foresight to cut those pecans into lumber and have used them around the resort. Okay. If you look at the podiums, if you will, that they used to check in at the golf course, they're made out of pecan off the 12th fairway. Wow. So, okay. being shy and bashful as I obviously am, <laughs> I acquired some of that. Okay. All right? There's another whole story to that. Right. But I have made pens, pencils, uh, different styles mm -hmm. pens, uh, letter openers, uh, the divot fixers for the golfers and so on, and had them engraved with the official Arnold Palmer signature logo, wow. and they're only available through the Pro Shop. Okay. That's pretty cool. That is cool. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. real proud of that. So we, we can promote uh, other resorts here uh, on our own show, but we want to talk about artistry on Main too. There you go. But, uh, but you, could, you could send them over there if they want uh, Arnold Palmer that's uh, right. pecan. That's right. So, uh, remember the old building where we graduated in Tenerton? Yeah. All right, uh -huh. which is now the middle school. That's right, yeah. This is a uh, frame from a bulletin board in one of the classrooms in the okay. old part of that old building. Part. Okay. okay. And uh, that's probably the oldest school in the county still operating. I think 87 years old or something like that now. I imagine it is, yeah. We were trying to have a bond pass to replace it, but we couldn't. <laughs> and so I have a couple of sets of pins made here from uh, that chestnut or uh -huh. uh, Bryson, who owns the building, right. gave me a piece of the original oak baseboard. So I've got a couple of pieces from this building. Wow. This one has an interesting history. Uh, in the mid-60s, my, my maternal grandfather was a construction superintendent and supervised a renovation at St. Joe's Hospital. Okay. At that point, they had a redwood water tank. And oh part of the renovation was to demolish that mm -hmm. and to put in a steel tank. Yeah. This is a piece of the redwood from oh, that tank. My granddad stuck it in the corner, it uh -huh. moved to my corner, and now it's pins. Wow. Okay. And that's something. Well, you know, there's a, uh, your, your life has uh, followed a destiny that uh, maybe you didn't even realize. No. I have, I have wood from the old Central School, which okay. now belongs to the college, college and yeah. I have some of those engraved with uh -huh. the new college logo. Wow. Okay. So you could donate uh, to Westland and probably get a pin. Uh, I suspect you probably <laughs> could do that. Uh, and very interestingly, just week before last, I, I guess time flies, but I got a piece out of the old Lawrence School that I went to. Wow. All right, before you and I got together right. at fourth with grade. Three. Fourth grade, yeah. At yeah. Academy, all yeah. right. But it was the same one room school wow. that my dad wow. went to. All right? How about that? And it's now the Lawrence Community Center. But okay. I was I, I ran into a guy, and there's a long story to get there, but he yeah. gave me a beam out of the floor of that school about 12 inches square and about three feet long. Yeah. I could probably make a pin for everybody that's still alive that went to that, went school. To that school. But I love finding that. And, and really, Real like crazy. I say, there are two stories, okay? Right where the wood came from, and I could spend a half an hour telling you about meeting Bob Gross that I hadn't seen for years who happened to have a piece uh -huh. and share it with me. Wow, you know, so, there's, and, and uh, just to think about how far this story could go, uh, Bob Chamberlain, who is still alive, a uh, physician in our time, in our era, and- uh, That's Mary Ann's dad. Mary Ann's dad. Yeah, right. she was in our class. Yeah, Mary Ann in our class, and so, uh, Bob was telling me recently that when he was on the school board forever and ever, 30 years, uh, he closed over 20 one-room schools in the county, and, and there's a challenge. You can schools you can go find wood from. <laughs> a lot of them. Uh, well, in, in fact, in Lawrence there were two schools. My mm -hmm. my dad went to the lower school, and my father-in-law went to the upper uh, the upper school. They're only about a half mile apart, wow. and they were both like first through sixth grade. Okay. Now we'd make a one through three school and a four through six school. Sure. But the kids had to walk back then. Yeah, that's, that's right. true. That was the real way to get there. Okay, well, let's, we have a, a time to look at your whole process here, too. Maybe we should do that for a little bit. Well, let me even go back a little further okay. than, sure. than this, okay. all right? Because this this simplifies the process. Okay. If I have what would be termed as lumber, lumber. right? Okay. But when I told you that I, uh, uh, the people at Lost Creek that had the sugar tree, this right. is actually a piece of it. Okay. All right? 
So I sawed it into usable lengths, uh -huh. and then I did the old firewood trick, all right? So I just split it with a wedge and uh -huh. made it, and tried to make it so that these two faces were relatively close to being perpendicular, okay. all right? right? But you can see that it's twisted, uh -huh. okay? Yeah. And that's just, that's wood. That's wood. Right. That's yeah. what happens. That's your right? challenge. So this is what I started with, all right? And by the way, you, you as, a, as a high school principal, and the teacher, you know that you, the student comes to you, you, you don't choose the student, and you do the best you can. Uh, I think you did some of that too, didn't you? I did, That's absolutely. Right. Right. So the first thing that I did was I took it to my jointer, and I don't have uh -huh. my jointer here, all right, but basically smoothed it to mm -hmm. get a perfectly smooth face, and then turned it and okay. ran it the other direction so that these two are perpendicular. Okay. Now the next step would be to, and I wouldn't necessarily oh, yeah. lay them out, but I see where I can make the best advantage. So out of right. this, I would be able to cut this mm -hmm. and make five long sticks, if you will. And, and you sure like this. this here to uh, not waste any. Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Trajectories and things like that. No, no. no. no it's just no, all, It's just like all. set the old table saw at three quarter inch, rip it okay. off, and let it go. We get the right? math. Yeah, but this on whatever I start with, this is my first goal. Okay, is to get a stick about three quarters of an inch square. Uh huh. All right, and so if I were to start on that walnut, I would cut a piece off the edge of it and then turn it and cut it okay. into three quarter inch. So this is my first goal. Good. Now I already told you I don't I don't make all the metal parts and so on. Right. Right. So these are just some of the kits that I buy, and so that uh, walnut pin was like this, except that one happens to have a stop on it, but sure. uh, a now, variety. Someone, someone okay. even wanting a pen, let's say for a reunion, mm -hmm. uh, they can they can come to you, you're going to be able to uh, under help them understand what the options are, what might work best. And Absolutely. I, I just uh, I just mailed uh, this morning a sample pen to Brewston School. They are this month demolishing the gym that was added to the school in 1930. Wow. And so they're going to take up this beautiful maple flooring and I'm going to make <clears throat> pins for them to sell at their reunion wow. to, to keep a piece of that, that gym alive. Sure. All right? And I, I've really gotten into trying to keep buildings yeah. alive by uh, repurposing right. them, if you will. That's right. All right? So every kit I buy has a brass tube in it. This, okay. this is a, a big part of the secret okay. to the pins. All right? They vary in length. You can see that one's much uh -huh. longer than this. Right. They vary in diameter. Okay. And so for each one, I will cut a piece exactly to the length of this. Okay. So I'll, I'll use my table saw and cut off a good square end, and I'll measure that and, and cut off exactly that length. Mm -hmm. All right. And then this is the this is a real neat gizmo right here. Okay. Right? Visualize a drill press here, if you will. Yeah. All right. My job is to take this and get a hole drilled through okay. it vertically. Right? right. So this is a self-centering drill press. Okay. I put the I block see. in. I crank that, and it's set and clamped on my drill press, so it's already lined up and held vertically. Okay. And so I very slowly and gently drill a hole through it. Yeah. And then... And the wood behaves itself. It doesn't... Uh, most of the time. Most of the time, okay. Yeah, okay. You used an analogy of children earlier. Sometimes yes. wood acts that way. Okay. Right? And then... Well, uh, you, you have... We don't have paddles anymore, but... Uh, no. You, you can correct with a piece of wood sometimes. A piece of wood. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Wood has a lot of functions. Okay. <laughs> Now, if you notice, this, this little brass tube is quite shiny. Okay. Right? Yeah. So what I would do with this one is take it to my little tiny belt sander and just put it on there lightly and scuff it up. Uh -huh. All right. And then I super glue that inside this tube. Okay. All right. And then I every one of those kits that has a different size tube comes. Uh, I buy a set of bushings. Now, mm -hmm. this is standard for all of the bushings. Okay. I'll show you how this fits in just a minute. But all of them fit just on this mandrel. Right? Okay. And then this smaller part goes inside the specific tube I'm working wow. on. You know, right? and I can tell I'm talking to a master today. Okay. You, you do this I so guess, well. I guess I didn't bring the right, the right bushing and the right <laughs> block, right? But it will fit inside the little okay. brass tube, okay. all right? And then 
this is the perfect size for me to turn this into. Okay. And some of them have different size ends. If we go back to the Philippi covered bridge mm -hmm. pin, see this end is much bigger than this one. Right. So I will have two different size bushings and I will turn so that this end matches up with this bushing wow. and that okay. matches to that bushing. And then I, I just, by eye, decide exactly what shape I want. Uh -huh. Lots of my pins I make straight, which is a shape, okay? Yeah. Lots of them I put some curves to, sure. uh, this whatever. This is the artist uh, in you. Yeah, so that's, yeah. That's, that's really, I guess, where the artistry comes yeah. to it. So the part I don't have on there is here, all right? Mm -hmm. And this mandrel, and I have one mounted here that would be for one of the slimmer pins okay. that I have over there. But this little bushing and this little bushing are critical in that they again tell me where, what size to make the ends. Okay. All right. Uh, if we look, yeah, you know, that one. Yeah. Look at that. You did something a little flare there. Yeah. It, it's kind of right. puffed up. It yeah. Looks like a little puffed cigar. Up. Yeah. Okay. And and then on one over here, you can see that I made it oh, almost oh. like the old Zaner Blozer pins yeah, that we used go. as kids. All right. So this is kind of where the artistic part artistic, comes right. in. All right. Um, and so I will take this to the lathe. Okay, and here we have a lathe already handy. And it, it simply fits okay. in, in the headstock. I would tighten the tailstock up, uh -huh. and that just really provides support and, and minimizes the vibration. Okay. Right. I'll use my chisel and the tool rest, and I'll turn it. Okay. All right. Very good. My first goal in turning is to and get this. This them. is a we're, we're covering all of this in uh, in a half an hour, but but this is a big process. Yeah, and people ask me often, how long does it take you to make one? Well, there are so many variables; it's hard to answer yeah. that. It takes me a lot longer to make one if I start with this, sure. especially given the fact that this was still green when I started on it. So I had to let it sit in my shop after I got it to this stage for. Uh -huh a couple of months okay. to air dry, right? yeah. and I've actually found that I can dry some of it by putting it in the microwave. Hmm. I put it in the that? microwave, turn it on for a little bit, uh, leave the door shut yeah. so the moisture kind of equalizes, open the door, let the moisture out, cook it for about 30 seconds, do that for a couple of days, and I can usually, if I need to, dry hmm. it pretty quickly. But on the, on the lathe, my first goal is to get them around. Okay. okay. Yeah. The lathe likes round pieces. Right. right? Yeah. So that's the first interim step. Mm -hmm. And then I go to the shaping part of making the, the two ends the okay. proper size, which may or may not be the same. And if there's a contour to be had yeah. or a straight or whatever, then I, I do that on the lathe. You know, here's the other artist part, and it strikes me that each one of these pins is unique. Yeah. There'll never be another pin like that. There are yeah. no two pieces of wood that are right. alike. Yeah. And I, I, I made a, a pretty good sized order for one of the schools mm -hmm. that they're closing between uh, Lewis and Gilmer counties and, my, and we got them okay. engraved. And my engraver said, now Greg, out of that whole stack you gave me, I measured them all with a micrometer. A micrometer. There was 30 thousandths inch difference between the one, first one and the last one. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow, that's pretty good. So visualize that being uh -huh. round and shaped to the shape it is. Yeah. And the next step is to do this. And Sandpaper. I sand it while it's spinning at about 3,000 revolutions per minute. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of sensation yeah, left. I, in my I think you have, you have a uh, mask here. With yeah. The right, because this is 320 grit, uh -huh. okay, which is about like a, a, a paper towel. Right. right? Okay. Yeah. And this is 600 grit that's like a Kleenex. Oh, yeah. All right. Wow. Those are the only two grits that I use. All right. Okay. So I try and turn them as smooth as I can uh -huh. so I don't have to do a lot of sanding. But this really generates talcum powder. And yeah. so this is my friend. Okay. okay. It's a, it's a, I probably, you probably can't hear me if I put it on, <laughs> but it's got a fan in it and oh. it pulls the air in from the back, keeps fresh that? air flowing okay. in, it's filtered back here, huh. and I wear that all the time. That well, I'm you, want, you don't want to end up with uh, bronchitis or emphysema? I did, did and I invested in oh, okay. Those. okay, okay, good. All right. So once it, and that's the part that really makes the dust. I have a pretty sophisticated dust collection system in my shop at home, uh, but it still won't get this real fine stuff sure. and so on. So this is my baby right here, right? Because right? when you sand the 600 grit, it's it's like a 
really like talcum powder. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the, the final couple of steps, this is my favorite finish. Okay. Not to plug them, Mylon's high build friction polish. Yeah. The friction is the scary word in there. Okay. okay? Because first of all, I never use a cloth on the, the lathe because the cloth can catch. Uh -oh. I'm proud that I've still got all 10 fingers, right, right. but the lathe can uh, distort them. My forestry quickly. friend does not. All right. Okay, this is a, 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 some of the hazards of the trade. Right. So yeah. this is what I use. I use okay. paper towels. Okay. All right. Uh, they have a nice amount of abrasion, if you will. All right. Uh, and they will, they'll shred if they catch on the lathe. And yeah. so I'd rather shred this than my fingers. Sure, right? absolutely. So I, I shake this stuff up and I put it in a almost a dropper bottle. And while it's spinning at 3,000 revolutions per minute, I will dribble that on there and catch the overflow with my paper towel and rub it furiously back and forth to uh -huh. spread it out. And I will continue to grip it tighter and tighter okay. so that I'm generating friction that basically melts that polish into the wood. Into the wood. And I'll put two or three coats on it. And wow. that's why uh, they have this real okay. nice sheen to them. Right? Wow. You know, and this and, and speaking of finished product, I mean we're we're running out of time here, but but uh, anyone would be proud of a product like this. Thank you. Like this. Yeah. Well, great. I really, really appreciate you coming oh, it's on. Been, it's been fun, Greenberg. Yeah. It's always good to yeah. see you again. And, and uh, folks, uh, Greg, like all the other artists, will be taking turns here uh, one day a month or so. He'll be actually in the shop, Artistry on Main. And of course, uh, anytime that we're open, and we're open, I think, almost every day of the week. We are on purpose. Oh, that, yeah, that's our purpose this time around. And 10 to so, 6, Monday through Saturday, and noon to 6 on Sunday. Okay, and so you, you come by and you can get a pin. Uh, Greg's display is right up front. You can get information there also about reaching him and uh, individual products. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Greg. All right. Great. God bless. You too.